And we're here at SoonerCon with Nana Visitor. How are you doing today? I'm really good. Pleasure I'm, to be here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's an honor, actually. I've been a fan of yours for as, almost as long as I can remember. And I, the last time I saw you, you were making some wonderful, wonderful little snack. And just looking at you now makes me hungry. <laughs> We have history. We were on a ship together. We were, and yeah. that's that's. It does my heart good, but I, I'm bowled over by the passion you have for cooking, not just for yourself, but for large groups of people. And you covered that really well in your new book here. I flipped through it. You've gone into a lot of detail about the joy that comes from creating meals for your friends, your family, uh, actually the preparation of the meals and. I strongly recommend anybody take a look at this for sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that the preparation and <clears throat> your enjoyment when you're doing the work, that the work has to be joyful and intent on, on what you're doing. It isn't to impress. It isn't to, you know, one-up anybody. It's to feed people and to gather people. And it's just, it's such an important aspect of life to me. And you really get into that when you talk about the, the almost meditative quality of picking out the ingredients, finding the right choices, and the fact that you don't need great ingredients, you just need to have good preparation and thoughtful, uh, mindful choices in how to prepare it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, fresh vegetables, of course, it's, it's the optimum thing. But if you don't, don't go for, you know, uh, old vegetables. Go for lentils and rice and make a wonderful um, Israeli dish of mehadra, you know, with sauces and fried onions. Just, just go with what you have and make the best of it. You also have a drink menu in there as well. You're very good at pairing a great dish with a choice to drink to kind of increase the social lubricant, as it were, and get people in the, the mood for just a good conversation. You can always have wine, but it's it feels special. I always feel special when I go somewhere and they, they have a cocktail for the evening, something that I wouldn't necessarily choose, but I find delicious. Um, that's, that's a wonderful element to... To give people a treat and, a, and an experience of something other than they usually choose for themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just such a shame because it seems like a lot of people, to me and, and my family, this, what you talk about in here, is something very basic to us. The idea of making a good meal, getting people together, having a good time, and yet... So there's so many people I talk to in the streets that are just like, oh, we don't, we never do that. We eat out, we get frozen foods, and there's a place for that, but th th that that's not your everyday life. I don't, I don't quite get where that comes from. No, I know things have sped up so much, and children have, you know, practices that you have to get to. But there's always a day on the weekend or the weekday. There's always one day that you can gather people together, and it's, it's. You know, it's it's a form of worship, worshiping our time, worshiping the gifts that the earth gives us. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds a little bit icky even to my ears, but it's it is true. I mean, it's it's a it's a practice in gratitude. And you never know when your last meal with somebody is going to be, or if something's going to change. That now they their diet changes, they can't enjoy that anymore. Every time you get together, it's it's special. It's it's worth a celebration. Like, for example, uh, are you having anything special in, in town while you're here? Anything you're looking for that you can't get anywhere else? Well, everyone tells me I need to go for a steak dinner. So I'm probably going to do that tonight. Fantastic. But, yeah. But then people say, oh, if you go to Oklahoma City, have a steak dinner. Well, what would you suggest? Uh, I would go for barbecue myself. Barbecue. Mm -hmm. All right. That's uh, good to know. And, and there, there's a couple places you could pick, and everybody's going to give you a different opinion as to what's the best. Yes. So I'm not going to try. Yeah. But, I mean, your, your, your slow roasted porks and your, your chickens and stuff that you cover in here, you'll find that in places around here as well. Sounds great. I did have biscuits this morning because that's not something you get everywhere in L.A. No. And uh, a good biscuit is really worthwhile. Definitely see that for sure. So are you working on another book, or would you even consider taking your little cooking preparation show that I saw a couple months ago and 
doing something else with that? I don't think so. I, I people have asked me to do that, mm -hmm. um, and there's something in me that rebels against. It's almost a. It's it's a. It almost gets fetishistic the way people are about food channels and cooking. And it's just all a little too precious. And it gets to be about, um, it's almost competitive. Mm -hmm. And that makes me want to step back from it. Sure. Because to me, it's always about the gift to people. It's, it's not about, you know, it, it gets a little creepy. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean because I, this has kind of died down a little bit. It has died down a little. The chew disgusted me. I felt the over overdone audience reactions. It was like, come on, stop. I prefer Julia Child where she occasionally dropped a chicken or something. <laughs> but she was showing us what to do so we could enjoy it ourselves. It just gets a little too precious. It, there was this phase that I called cupcake worship. Oh, yes. And, and it's like, I, I like cake. I yes. do. Yes, yes. But when you're so concerned about it looking cute and, and being a little critter and you don't actually want to eat it because, like, that, that's... What's, what's the point in the first place? I'm sorry. You are going to lose the taste. Yes. And it's the taste that matters. Mm -hmm. I, I, fondant versus frosting. What are your thoughts? Uh, I definitely like frosting. Okay. And the cakes that I like the best are wet cakes. Actually, I think I have the carrot cake in the book and it's uh, a frosting that you it's a frosting you put on while the cake is still hot so it melts into the cake that's my favorite that is nice because you don't have to wait for the cake to cool down while you're no it's and it's delicious it makes a very moist wet dense cake you said you know frosting over fondant I'm on board with that and I knew you were my kind of person when I'm reading a recipe in here and you say it's supposed to feed four but I can eat half of it by myself it's like okay <laughs> I, I'm on board with that for sure. <laughs> I, this is the great thing about this book is so personal. You just have a very conversational tone to the whole thing. It's basically a blog with better set hype, basically. It really is. <laughs> yeah, I used to have a blog um, called Un Petit Morceau um, because I had a, a catering business when I lived in New Mexico mm -hmm. and I cooked for large numbers of people but it was this same way um, I didn't I didn't standardize the recipes I fixed them until they matched the the um, taste picture I had in my mouth um, so it was very very personal and my partner and I did very well in uh, New Mexico for a while there. I remember hearing about that and I kept trying to figure out how to get out that way just to have something you were whipping up and it's a regret of mine that that never happened. <laughs> One fun thing that we did for the documentary, what we left behind is uh, they said we, you know, sign autographs or something to help raise money for the documentary and I said, what if I cook dinner and people came to dinner and, you know, and we did that, and we had, uh, I rented out a place and I cooked for, I don't know how many we ended up being, like around 20, I don't really remember how many people, but it was such a great night. It was one of the most fun uh, fan experiences I've ever had. I, that is a very, very classy way to do it. Um, are you a fan of Get Smart by any chance? Oh, I love Get Smart. Okay, uh, do you know Carl Berkmeyer? No. Okay. Carl Berkmeyer was the head of the largest Get Smart fan internet group for like the past 20 years. Oh, wow. And about, I want to say, 15, 16 years ago, he put together what was called The Event, where he got anybody connected with the show who was still around, got them all to a little restaurant in Los Angeles, had everybody who could make it fly out there, and there were no pictures, no autographs. We're just all going to have dinner. I love that. It was a, an amazing idea. I love that. It, it was, and those are literally once in a lifetime opportunities. Right. I, we were here at SoonerCon. I love SoonerCon. And. Excuse me. I, get into the bathroom. Whatever. Look for yourself on YouTube later. Cool. <laughs> but we have one of these every year. There'll never be another one of those nights.
Right. And and the fans will remember that for the rest of their lives. Right. It was it was great, and I still keep up with some of the people who were at that dinner, which is so fun. It really was, and it's said I, just the fact that that the trip we took in uh, January was the best trip of my life. Wasn't it, it fun? I literally. I, I loved it. I, I have ne- I love cruising. I love conventions, and I, there was this thought that, what if, if I combine this two, am I going to have some sort of weird mishmash that I, no, it was the best of both worlds, yeah. and more, so much more. It really is. It, it puts us on a, a footing that everything is relaxed, and we're, you know, humans experiencing something. Mm-hmm. But that's what food is. Food gives you something that you're both doing, and everybody is on the same footing when they're having a meal. And that's what I love about doing it. And, and it's, it's something you're sharing. And right away you have something in common. Absolutely. And yet, you're each bringing your own palace to the table. So right. I could take this big old swig of blue cheese and say, this is the best thing I've ever tasted. And the next person at the table will be like, why are you serving me a plate full of feet? I mean, it, it, right. it, and you get to talk about that and share your that's experiences. Right. That's right. So this book here that I've been talking about, if somebody wants to pick this up for themselves, where can they do it? Well, you know what? Right now, at the conventions and on board the ship, the cruise, the Star Trek cruise, it's the only places. I've tried to figure out how to do it on the Internet, and it's just more than my, my you know, 20th century brain can handle. Um, but uh, So I bring it to conventions, mm-hmm. and, and it's on the ship. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I wish you all the best of luck with this because as somebody who is a fan of yours and a fan of this, the chance to have it both together is really, really exciting for me. And you're a perfect fit for this podcast. So thank you so much for I being so here. I so appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's and been a pleasure. Take good care. Thanks. You too.